In 1957 when Kwame Nkrumah got into independence, the people of Ghana were jubilant and hailed him as a hero. During his reign of power, he was idolized as Nkrumah the Redeemer or Nkrumah who never dies. Years later, Nkrumah was severely criticized as a virtual dictator who imprisoned those who opposed him. Several other charges leveled were on the grounds of introducing the Preventive Detection Act, corruption, dictatorial practices, oppression and lastly forcing into retirement the army's most senior officers which according to the sources was the principal reason for the uprising. Nkrumah has been severely criticized as a despot, a virtual dictator. The man who came from prison to wield such autocratic power has maintained it by imprisoning those who opposed him. In 1961, the Queen visited Ghana. Nkrumah's power politics were beginning to cause embarrassment to Britain, but he did seem genuinely concerned to build up the prestige of Ghana while remaining uncommitted to any of the main power blocs. In February 1966 Nkrumah was encouraged by the US to travel to China and Vietnam to attempt to broker a ceasefire in the Vietnam War. A group of senior officers gathered several hundred soldiers and moved them to Accra telling them that Nkrumah was going to deploy them to fight in Vietnam. Aided by these men, the plotters, under Colonel Emmanuel Kotoka, seized the state radio and presidential palace, the Flagstaff House. Kwame Nkrumah left Accra on 21 of February 1966. He was seen off at the airport by most of the leading government and party officials, and by service chiefs. He received handshakes and the expressions of good wishes from Harley, Deku, Yakubu, and others. In his words, these men, smiling and ingratiating, had all the time treason and treachery in their minds. They had even planned my assassination on that day, though they later abandoned the idea. The operation began in the early hours of Wednesday 23rd of February 1966. The garrison at Kumasi, the capital of Ashanti region in Ghana, numbering 600 men, was ordered to move southwards to the capital, Accra. On the way, the convoy of some 35 vehicles was met and halted by the two arch traders, Colonel Emmanuel Kwesi Kotoka, commander of the 2nd Infantry Brigade Group, and Major Akwasi Amankwa Afrifa of the 2nd Brigade. Afrifa was left in command while Kotoka went to Accra to report progress to Commissioner of Police, J.W.K. Harley. He also sought to find some soldier better known than himself to be the nominal head of the revolt. The man chosen was Major General Ankara. The troops were then told that Nkrumah intended sending them to fight in Vietnam and in Rhodesia, and that he had deserted Ghana taking with him three million pounds. There was therefore no government left in Ghana, and it was their duty to assume control of the country to maintain law and order, they were told. It was also said that. Russian planes were landing on a secret airstrip in northern Ghana. They were also informed that a secret tunnel had been made from Flagstaff House, the presidential residence, to Accra Airport, and for days Russians had been arriving. The only way to save Ghana, and to avoid being sent to fight in Vietnam, the troops were told, was to take Flagstaff House. The first objective of the military operation was to force the surrender of Major General Barwa, Army Chief of Staff and Deputy Chief of Defense Staff, who was in command of the Ghana Army in the absence from the country of the Chief of Defense Staff, General Afari. Major General Barwa could not be intimidated. He was woken from his sleep in the early hours of the morning of the 24th by the arrival of Colonel Kotoka and some 25 men. He courageously refused either to join the traitors or to surrender. 
Thereupon, Colonel Gotoka shot him dead at point blank range in cold blood. The seven security officers who were stationed at Barwa's house were also murdered on the spot on Gotoka's orders. The day of the coup, they were not uh, they were not aware of what was happening. He was in his house when a telephone rang. Who rang? It was General Bauer. The one was killed. Okay. His son. They always called the boy Captain, Captain, Captain. So Colonel said he was in the in his room when the boy rang <coughs> around 1 a.m. or so. There are Colonel. Some soldiers have come to take. They have taken my daddy away. Then the thing sound alarm to him. But what according to conversation we had, he said, ah, what was happening? Then he got alerted. Not knowing those who are going to make the coup, they have already earmarked the people they are going to pick up, the people they are going to, you know, kill before anything else. And Kenzaragu was also one of them, because he was the commander of the presidential guards. They are the fighting force. Because they know without him, Everything will be easy for them. Coach chop. Yes. This stage of the operation was badly bungled. Hassan was arrested, but Zanlarigu, when confronted, escaped through a window of his house and drove to Flagstaff House to warn the Presidential Guard Regiment. Apparently, Colonel Zarangu is a very experienced officer. He hasn't got his name tag on his bungalow. But the rest all had their name tags on their bungalows. That's for him. Why didn't he have his? It, it, for security reasons, he So, mm. when they pick up General Bawa mm -hmm. and the boy alerted Colonel uh, Zarogu, that, ah, they've come to pick my daddy. Some soldiers came. Then the thing sounded to him and said, ah, what's happening? Then he became alerted. Mm -hmm. Then he put up uh, his track suit. Before he realized, he had the, the, the soldiers looking for his house because the number, the name was not in front of the bungalow. They missed, they missed the house. They missed it. They missed it. So quickly, when he saw them, then he took over. By then, there was fighting already in Vlasov House. Okay. He was at the, uh, the what is Dolor Villas when this was happening. So according to him. He put up his uh, task suit, jumped through the wall, then walked from Dodua village through Elwak, then through Christ the King Church, just behind Father Christ the King Church. Yes. It was there he realized that they were fighting, the soldiers were fighting his troops to overtake Nkrumah. There were about 30 members of the Guard Regiment at Flagstaff House when the alarm was raised. These were soon joined by others who managed to slip in by a back entrance to reinforce their comrades. Were there casualties by that time where had people been killed? Well, I thought casualties for the they are, uh, well, the advancing to those who were trying to overtake, there were casualties. Because the type of weapon they have, when they aim at the, the vehicle, the vehicle will bend together with other people. Oh. That for that one, we have, we have a, I mean, sophisticated weapons. Then, when our vehicle overtake the ammo car, just at the cap, at the cave, then the fire started from Flaster House. In fact, look at the We have almost more than 10 vehicles, foreigners. First shot, those people at the top, they all defeated them within a minute. My commanding officer, uh, the plateau commander, was shot by his hand. Then he started dropping from the vehicle. When the vehicle was moving, straight to the place the chin, back of the church. You can't find our plateau commander to, to give us instruction. Our plateau sergeant, which goes hard, he lose up. She take over as a plateau commander and a plateau sergeant. She gave us instruction to fire 111 into the Flaster house because nobody knew what's going on. At the same time, Brigadier Hassan, head of military intelligence, 
and Colonel Zainarigu, commander of the Presidential Guard Regiment, and Owusu Sekiri, former head of the CID and in charge of the Special Branch, were to be arrested. Colonel Kotaka had established a combined headquarters with the police at the police headquarters, and from there the order was given for the 2nd Battalion to go into action at Flagstaff House. At this stage, a major problem was arising. The Presidential Guards were running out of arms. The ammunition that the troops were using were almost exhausted, so he asked them to cool down. In Kuma have Russia army. Okay. It was Russia army who guide Nkrumah, plus Ghanaian soldiers called presented gas regiment, POGL. Mm -hmm. But any time Nkrumah is traveling, they use all the heavy weapons from Flaster to Shahis for reservicing. If Nkrumah is coming, they bring, they will bring the weapons back again. But lucky enough that they step on heavy, heavy weapons from Flaster to Shahis, even though so, it was very tough. Now, when General Kalisarangu took over his command with the people, hey, come and see. They were fighting each other until he needed reinforcement. This is where the problem came from. He couldn't get reinforcements? Mm -hmm. They sent message to Shah Hills for his second in command to come. Not only that, my husband was, was bought. He was bought? He was bought! Okay. The coup will never, it will never have happened. Who was that man? Colonel Tete. Mm -hmm. No, Major Tete. Mm -hmm. Shah Hills. The same messages that the near reinforcement because most of our armament were kept been sent were there. at that place. Ah, they were fighting ah, until around 4 a.m. On the 25th. Around. 4 a.m. of the 25th? 24th. 24th. Okay, it started quite at midnight. It started at midnight. Okay. It started at uh, 23rd midnight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Colonel Zangu said he realized that the ammunition that they were using was getting exhausted. So he, he asked his people to control what they were doing. Then it came to a point that uh, at that time they have a small radio with them. Mm -hmm. So all the announcement that was being, uh, you know, uh, aired on uh, Radio GBC, they were listening to everything. So when they were fighting, the, the commentators were reporting what was happening and they were also listening. So when he realized that there was little they could do without the reinforcement, they tried everything possible, this man refused to come. The guard regiment fought on, though their position was now hopeless. The outside walls of the Flagstaff house had been opened, and the defenders had retreated behind the second gate. Still they refused to surrender. Our plateau commander were, wind, were shot by his hand, which is we couldn't see him again to give us instruction. Then, the few people we are lucky in front, we try our best to money to go to the Christ of the King, the back of the, ch the church. church. Yes. And then um, we are there for almost since in the morning by five o'clock up to 3.45 when the Canadonto brought a big Amoka to come and blast the wall and the chorus number nine plateau to enter Flasa house. Earlier in the morning, although heavily outnumbered they successfully held up the rebel detachment sent to seize the Ghana radio station a short distance from Flagstaff House. Only 8 of the 124 detailed for this operation managed to get through. They captured the radio station, apparently without incident, and at 6A.M. Colonel Kotoka arrived to broadcast that the army and police had taken over the government of Ghana. Fellow citizens of Ghana, I have come to inform you that the military, in cooperation with the Ghana police, have taken over the government of Ghana today. The myth surrounding Nkrumah has been broken. Parliament has been dissolved and Kwame Nkrumah has been dismissed from office. All ministers are also dismissed from office. The CPP is disbanded with effect from now. It will be illegal for any person to belong to it.
The announcement was premature. At 7 a.m. resistance was actually increasing at Flagstaff House, as the defenders, less than a hundred of them, fought fiercely back against some 600 rebel troops. It was only after the rebels threatened to blow up the family residence at the Flagstaff House in which Nkrumah's wife and three young children were sheltering that they finally gave in. But before giving in, they tried to smuggle Nkrumah's family to the Egyptian embassy. On their way, they got arrested by rebel forces. So, so they surrendered? Before they surrender, Colonel Zangu said, look, the president that we were uh, uh, protecting was away, was not in the country. Now, the only thing they could do now was to protect the family. That means Mother Fatia, Samia, Children. Seku, and Gamal. Uh, and uh, Goke. Goke, Gamal. It's Goke, Goke, mm -hmm. to protect them. So, what he did was that to see what was happening, he took a white uh, blanket, with, uh, tied with a stick, and hosted it on one of the vehicle, two, two, two vehicles, one from, uh, uh, they drove from, uh, from Plasterhouse to Sankara, is it Sankara Circle, now mm -hmm. Koje, mm -hmm. Akoje, is it? Yes. One from Akoje to Circle, one from Akoje to Danko Circle, just to get the mind of what was happening. All this thing going on, Lady Ghana was announcing it, they were hearing everything on the set. So he found that, okay, in attempt to send Madame Fatia, Samia and the brothers to a safer place, what he could do was that, then he ordered for the, the escort cars. Normally, we have an escort car, we have the one in the front, the one the person, and then the one behind, and the supporting one. So he asked them to light them up to get ready. But that's still yet, the soldiers who were, they were still fighting. So, by then he was in communication with the Egyptian ambassador. Egyptian because, ambassador. Yeah, because you know, Fatah naturally is an Egyptian. Egyptian yeah. For, just for, to keep them because uh, they were run short of ammunition. And then the reinforcement that's supposed to have come from Shahir, because the guy was with the, the coup makers, mm -hmm. so he would not budge an inch. So what he did was that he called the, the vehicles ready and then asked escort to take Mother Fatia and the children to uh, Egyptian embassy, which is very close to the flight mm -hmm. You know, when you pass through, uh, what, Cross the King, mm -hmm. that place. I mean, you go two hours after you are going there. They, it's, it's, it's not very far from Flatter House. True. So, along the line, when the, the vehicle moved out from Flatter House, not only the soldiers, they took cover around Christ the King Church. The moment they saw Madame Fatia and children passing, they arrested them. And they took them straight to police headquarters. Accra Central, or the one in, in near Accra Central. Police headquarters, the oh. one uh, that the uh, on the, the way, way to Ring Road. Yes, Ring Road. They took them to that place. You know the humiliation that came to those people. Eh? Honestly, at times I always say that it's, it's God that does everything. Samia couldn't have come to this country. Why do you say so? Why I say so? Because of the, the I mean, the what was meted to the, even the family. What did they do exactly to them? What happened? They were really disgraced. Now, from the Colonel Sarango had wanted them to be at a safer place in the Egyptian embassy because the soldiers couldn't have entered the embassy. Mm. They couldn't have done it, mm. as, as you know. So immediately arrest them. They took them to uh, police headquarters. Police headquarters. Mm. From there, they were deported. Out of the country. Exactly. Same day, 24th February, yes. 66. <laughs> you are wow. deported. Look at, I mean, look at the mental agony of Madame Fatia and the children. The new government, known as the National Liberation Council, NLC, justified its action by citing Nkrumah's abuse of power, widespread political repression, sharp economic decline, and rampant corruption. The school was carried out completely because of the things that had happened in Ghana and of the, of the, uh, because of the tyranny and the partisan of Kwame Nkrumah, the deposed president. 
everybody in Ghana was fed up with it. And therefore, you could see this spontaneous uh, result which uh, followed the coup. It would be later revealed, that the coup itself was the culmination of intense planning by the CIA aided and abetted by MI5, the British intelligence service, and the infamous French intelligence apparatus operating under the political cover of the Quai d'Orsay and headed by Jacques Foccart. John Stockwell's, ex-CIA agent, former station chief in Ivory Coast, revealed in his book published in 1978, that the planning was largely the work of Howard T. Baines, the Accra CIA station chief working undercover as a political officer at the U.S. Embassy. Baines had boasted to Stockwells about his role and how there was no paper trail to be found that would incriminate the United States. The New York Times was able to conduct its own investigation to establish the veracity of Stockwells' revelations in his book, from first-hand, inside sources. Declassified documents from the U.S. government itself also attest to its complicity. The leaders of the February 24, 1966 coup established the new government around the National Liberation Council (NLC) and pledged an early return to a duly constituted civilian government. Now, people are now crying. Even Kuma is there, Ghana. But what, there's nothing you can do. You today, if they appoint you as a president today, people start talking about. It.